Picture this. A small town hidden deep within a verdant valley. Picture me, a native, waking up every day to the serene chorus of nature. It's the kind of place where everybody knows everyone else. Where life is as predictable as the changing seasons. Stories are the only source of a mystery. Tales whispered by the elderly, exchanged between eager kids, serving as a portal to the mystical. The most captivating of them all, the legend of the lost city. A city that was once grander than any other, with towering skyscrapers reaching the clouds, a paradise shaped by man. But one day it vanished, swallowed by time and nature, leaving behind but whispers of its existence. It said the lost city chose someone to narrate its tale, someone to hear the echo of its forgotten voices. And one ordinary morning, with the sun shyly peeking over the mountainous horizon, I found that the lost city had chosen me. I woke up to an ethereal murmur carried on the wind, a whisper that said, the lost city calls for you. Life in our small town was simple. We lived by the rhythms of nature, surrounded by the lost lush green valley and the comforting circle of mountains. But for me, life was anything but simple. I had always been an imaginative soul. Eager for stories and legends, my mind a fertile ground for tales to take root and blossom. But never had I dreamt that I would become part of a story, an essential character in the legend of the lost city. The day began like any other, the chirping of birds, the golden morning light flick filtering through my window. The same serene peace that filled our valley, but as I shook off the veil of sleep, a whisper echoed in my mind. Like a soft melody riding on the morning breeze, it was a voice, subtle yet clear, saying, The lost city calls you. I sat up in my bed, eyes wide, heart pounding. This was the beginning, the inciting incident that shattered the peace of my predictable life. I was chosen by the lost city, selected to uncover the truth of its downfall. With a mysterious whisper, the lost city calls for you, echoing in my mind, I embarked on the adventure that was as fantastical as it was haunting. The days melded into one another. Each sunrise and sunset marked not by the passage of time, but by the voices that grew more pronounced. They weren't mere whispers anymore, they had evolved into a symphony of echoes, each note revealing a facet of the lost city. In my waking hours, these voices spun tales of a city once grand and beautiful. A city alive with the bustle of the busy markets, the mirthful laughter of children echoing through the narrow lanes, the vibrancy of the various festivals, the harmonious coexistence of people from different cultures, and the awe-inspiring architecture that stood as a testament to the city's prime. Through these whispers, I could visualize the city in its prime. As I was walking down its cobbled streets, interacting with its denizens, participating in its vibrant life. It was as though a film was playing in my mind. The images so vivid, so compelling that they were almost tangible. Every scent, every sound, every sensation was heightened, each adding another layer to the growing narrative of the lost city. Yet beneath the city's apparent splendor, I could sense an undercurrent of something darker, a shadowy presence, a disquiet that was an 
intangible. As intangible as it was persistent. It was as if the city was showing me its surface charm, yet hinting at the sinister secrets hidden beneath. These darker whispers carried veiled allusions to a powerful curse, a malvolent force that was intertwined with the city's fate. The once comforting quiet of my small town was now filled with the incessant whispers of the lost city, each pulling me deeper into it and its enchanting narrative. The sleepy valley I called home was now a mere backdrop to a saga unfolding within my mind. A saga of a city that was lost, but refused to be forgotten. Here ends the first part. Of the rising chaos. The symphony of voices didn't merely play in the background of my days, they became the orchestrator of my dreams. Each night as I closed my eyes, the whispers would blossom into full-fledged stories, transporting me back in time, guiding me through the lively streets of the lost city. The city at night was a sight to behold, buildings illuminated with Glowing lanterns, streets alive with the hum of nocturnal activities, and the air carrying a symphony of sounds. The distant laughter, the clinking of glasses, and the soft strumming of a lute. But every night, at the stroke of midnight, everything changed. The laughter turned into cries of despair, the vibrant streets into eerie avenues and the once bustling city fell eerily silent. I found myself in the city square, standing before a towering statue. The statue, a magnificent deity radiating an aura both alluring and terrifying. I saw a procession of city folk their faces etched with fear and respect, approaching the statue with offerings. The whispers in my dream grew louder, articulating a single word, or word over and over. The curse. As the dreams progressed, I could sense a shadow spreading over the city. Buildings that once gleamed under the sun now stood shrouded in a growing gloom. The once vibrant markets were quieter, the mirthful laughter replaced by hushed whispers of dread. The powerful curse, once a nebulous concept whispered by the wind, was now palpably real, suffusing the air with an ominous chill. Awake or asleep, the voices of the lost city consumed me, they weaved an intricate tapestry of joy and despair, grandeur and ruin, life and curse. Every day brought a new revelation, a new piece of the, to the puzzle. Yet the ultimate truth, the key to the city's downfall, remained tantalizingly out of reach. Driven by a compelling curiosity and an irresistible urge to solve the enigma of the lost city, I realized there was only one thing left to do. And thus, I made the life-altering decision to trace the path of the voices. The journey to the heart of the origin, a quest was set before me. A quest that would lead me beyond the comfort of my valley, into the unknown. This decision marked the end of the second act, the culmination of the rising action, setting the stage for the climax to unfold. Stepping outside my comfort zone, I left the familiar sights of my valley town, embarking on a journey 
that would take me across the globe. The voices of the lost city were my compass, their echoes guiding me to distant lands. Unfamiliar cultures and challenging terrains, the journey wasn't easy. It was fraught with hurdles, each one testing my determination, forcing me to confront fears I never knew existed. I crossed scorching deserts, where the sun blazed mercilessly, the sand beneath my feet a fiery testament to the endurance demanded by my quest. Nights spent under a canvas of stars, the cool desert, wind whispering stories of ancient travelers who'd once tread the same path. From the arid desert, my journey led me to towering mountains, their majestic peaks seemingly piercing the azure skies. Scaling their treacherous slopes was a battle against both the relentless forces of nature and my own physical limits. The biting cold, thinning air and grueling ascent were constant challenges, yet with each successful climb my resolve only hardened. I navigated through dense, untamed jungles, their verdant secrets hidden beneath a canopy of interwoven flora. I battled through torrential rains and navigated treacherous swamps, each day in the jungle a testament to nature's raw, unforgiving power. The seas weren't any kinder. Embarking on the tumultuous waters, I experienced the raw power of oceanic storms and the hypnotic calm of a sea at rest. I saw sunsets that set the sky ablaze and sunrises that filled the world with a soft, radiant glow. Every hurdle I encountered, every obstacle I overcame brought me one step closer to my goal. Each victory, no matter how small, felt like a piece of the puzzle falling into place. The echoes of the lost city were my constant companions, their whispers a comforting presence amidst the challenges of my journey. Just as the struggle seemed insurmountable, I finally reached it, the ruins of the lost city. My heart pounded in my chest as I took in the sight before me. Crumbling structures overgrown with vegetation, yet exuding a haunting beauty. The voices in my head reached a crescendo, only the fall abruptly silent. I had made it. I had traced the path of the voices to their origin, but they had gone silent. I was standing in the heart of the lost city, yet its secret seemed farther than ever. The question echoed in my mind. Had I failed them? There I was, standing amidst the remnants of a civilization lost to time, my mind echoing with an unnerving silence. It was a strange experience to finally reach my destination, yet feel as if I was miles away from my goal. The voices my constant companions had abruptly ceased. The lost city, once alive with echoes of its past, stood hauntingly silent. I felt lost, unsure of my next step. But I was not one to give up so easily. I had come too far, overcome too many hurdles and given too much of myself to abandon my quest. Gathering my courage, I decided to delve deeper into the ruins, hoping that the city's physical remnants would reveal the secrets its voices had so far withheld. As I wandered through the city's ruins, I felt a sense of awe and sadness. Here was a civilization that had once thrived, its people full of life and aspirations, now reduced to mere ruins. I could almost hear the ghostly echoes of children's laughter, the distant hum of busy marketplaces, the rhythmic melody of traditional music, all swallowed by the relentless march of time. I spent days exploring the city, from its grand structures that spoke of its past glory to its humble dwellings that whispered tales of everyday life. 
I found ancient inscriptions, time war murals and remnants of the city's culture and traditions. Every artifact, every ruin provided a glimpse into the city's past, a puzzle piece waiting to be placed. One night as I sat under the sky studded with countless stars, contemplating the fragments of the city's past, something miraculous happened. A gust of wind blew through the ruins, carrying a familiar tune. The whispers of the lost city were back, only this time they were not mere whispers, they spoke to me with newfound clarity, their tales weaving together the pieces I had gathered. The curse, they said, was not an external force, but a creation of our own, a manifestation of our greed, our disregard for nature, our relentless pursuit of power and glory. We were blind to the imbalance we were creating until it was too late. The lost city was not taken by time, we pushed it away. As the whispers faded, I sat in silence, the weight of their revelations heavy on my heart. It wasn't an external curse or malevolent deity, it was the city's own inhabitants who had sealed its fate. Reeling from the revelation, I spent the subsequent days in a state of profound contemplation. The curse of the lost city was not supernatural. It was very human and dangerously relatable. The echoes of the lost city had guided me to their origin not to uncover a fantastical tale, but to learn a timeless lesson. One that resonated more deeply than any mythical curse could have. Each ruined structure, every faded mural and the ever silent streets of the lost city were now seen in a different light. They stood as silent testimonials of the city's past mistakes. A stark reminder of the devastating consequences of unchecked ambition and disregard for the natural balance. Yet amidst the grim reminders, I also found signs of hope. I discovered areas in the city where nature had started reclaiming its space. Intertwining with the ruins in an intricate dance of coexistence, this harmonious blend of the natural world and human-made structures suggested a possibility for redemption a second chance. It was then I realized the real purpose of my journey. I was not just a passive listener of the lost city's tale, but an active bearer of its message. The whispers had chosen me to convey their cautionary tale to the world, to ensure that their history would not repeat itself. I spent the rest of my time documenting the city, capturing its tale in photographs, sketches and words. I gathered every piece of the city's past, every echo of its downfall, every sign of its hopeful resurgence, storing them not only in my bag, but also etching them into my heart. Finally, it was time for me to bid farewell to the lost city. Standing at the city outskirts, it took one last look at the ruins. The silent structures now a symbol of a civilization, hubris, the resilient signs of nature's reclaiming, the intertwining dance of redemption, all carrying the echoes of a tale that was once tragic and hopeful. With a promise to share their story, I turned back to the city and started the journey home. The path back was just as challenging, but my heart was lighter, my purpose clearer. With each step I felt an immense responsibility to the voice that led me to their lost city. The echoes once mysterious were now a clear message to be spread. Upon reaching my small valley town, it, I was greeted by familiar sights and sounds, but beneath the comforting familiarity I felt a change. The valley, the world felt different, or perhaps I was who had changed. 
I looked at my humble surroundings with newfound appreciation and a sense of responsibility to protect them. And thus, I embarked on this next phase of my journey to tell the tale of the lost city. I started sharing the city story through the various channels. I uploaded videos sharing my journey, the exploration and the revelation of the lost city. I held exhibitions showcasing photographs and artifacts, gave lectures about the city's history, its rise and fall and its cautionary tale. I also launched a blog detailing my expedition and the wisdom I gleaned from the ruins. The response was overwhelming. The tale of the lost city resonated with people worldwide. It served as a stark reminder of the consequences of our actions, the importance of coexisting with nature and the need for balance. The tale of the lost city had become a global phenomenon inspiring discussions, debates and even influencing policy changes. I continue to work, leveraging the story's impact to promote environmental preservation, sustainable living and a deeper understanding of our past mistakes. With each passing day, I could feel the ripples of change. Schools began to incorporate the story of the lost city into their curriculum. Businesses started re-evaluating their environmental impact and communities worldwide began taking steps towards sustainable living. The echoes of the lost city had achieved their purpose. Their tale was not only heard, but was inciting change. As I watched the world responding to the story, I felt a sense of accomplishment and gratitude. The voices had guided me on a journey of self-discovery, led me to unearth a city's forgotten past and allowed me to serve as a bridge between the echoes of a fallen civilization and the world of today. Looking back, I realized that the lost city was never truly lost. Its echoes were there, waiting to be heard, its story waiting to be shared, and while the city may have fallen into ruin, its spirit endured, carried forth by the wind and by a storyteller who listened. In the end, I said before my microphone, one more time, the soft glow of my computer illuminating the room with a heart full of memories, lessons and a story that had transformed not just my life but many others, I began speaking. Once upon a time in a valley nestled between the mountains and the sea.